That's right, everybody. It's time for another edition of Overrated, Underrated, Properly Rated. With I just want you to know that if you do not watch this video all the way through, I will know because I have the analytics on my side, and it'll make me really, really sad. And when I get sad, I tend to stress eat and gain weight very, very quickly. And when I do that, I'll probably gain 500 pounds, and I'll get morbidly obese, and I'll probably die of a heart attack, okay? So please, watch this video all the way through. I promise you, my life depends on it. No, I'm not morbidly obese, and my life is not in danger, but I just wanted to catch your attention. Anyway, now that that worked, and I do have your attention, let's begin. X Productions, Jimmy Butler. During the season, he seems to always be forgotten about, but he has, has led the Heat to a couple deep playoff runs, and sometimes looking like a superstar doing it. Well, he usually gets forgotten about in the regular season because Miami plays a pretty boring brand of basketball, and also because Butler historically usually misses a lot of games in the regular season, and he's a bit of a coaster, meaning that he doesn't start trying his best until the playoffs come around. But even in the playoffs, he'll have an amazing performance, and then the next game will kind of disappear. So that's really what separates the superstars from the stars like Butler, is the consistency. His A game might be as good as anybody, but his A game isn't shown as often as the best players in the league. Verdict? Properly rated. David McCright, Jason Giambi, one of the most disciplined hitters of the 2000s, won an MVP, should have repeated in 2001, and was a master of drawing walks and hitting clutch home runs, seems to be a forgotten legend of the steroid era today. Well, he kind of, as you mentioned at the very end there, he was a legend of the steroid era, and even though Giambi was a great player at his peak, he was a product, mostly, of steroids. Even at his best, his numbers were still below that of the very, very top guys, obviously Barry Bonds. He also wasn't really a dominant player after his first year with the Yankees. He slowly declined. He went from being dominant to great to very good, good, and then by the time his contract was over with the Yankees, he didn't win any rings, so he kind of gets forgotten about. Shout out to his gold thong, though, that he used to bust out of slumps. Overall, I would say that he is properly rated. Richard Parker, Metallica, arguably the most influential metal band of all time. Love to hear you talk about them, especially with their new album coming out. Love your vids. Thanks, Rich. I would say that Metallica is definitely on the Mount Rushmore of rock bands. In my opinion, if you talk about rock metal, the Enter Sandman is basically like the national anthem of rock music. I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest Metallica fan. Like, I don't listen to all their stuff, but I have some of their songs, and I like them. They're obviously one of the best bands ever. I'd say that they're properly rated. Garrett Heist. Kirk Heinrich. He was a solid role player for over a decade on some decent teams. Quintessential leader off the bench and always reliable. Well, he certainly was very, very white. I don't think that Kirk was really anything special. As you said, he was a solid role player. Really nothing much more than that. I mean, does anybody really care about Kirk Heinrich all the time? I never hear him get talked about, really. So I guess he's properly rated because everybody knows he was average at best. Aaron Bowden. Please rate a guy like Jason Kelsey. Been in the league for so long and I feel like he's only gotten his praise in the past few years after being one of the most dominant people in his position since year two or three in my opinion. All love Barry. Heart emoji. Well, I think Kelsey has been very, very underrated for years. As you said, he's long been one of the best centers in the league. Even though coming into the league he really wasn't that highly touted and obviously the success of his brother as well might have overshadowed him because his brother plays a much more glamorous position. But yes, I do believe he is underrated and he has an argument to make the Hall of Fame someday when he finally retires, which as an Eagles fan, I hope is not this year. Verdict underrated. Cole Pierce, Andrew Wiggins, role player who somewhat blossomed into a star in the Warriors finals run. Well, this is a bit of a tough one because Wiggins is a draft bust and yet he still is an impactful player, but he obviously has not come close to living up to the hype. He was selected first overall. He was supposed to be a super star and in Golden State he's found the perfect situation because he has no pressure on him and he is still blue chip talent an elite athlete a great wing defender who can hit the mid-range shot he can spot up for three he can do all of these things without having the burden of all the expectations on him and so he's really shined but I would not say he's a star I would say that you could say he's a star role player maybe if that makes sense at all I don't know overall I would say that he started his career overrated but now I would say he might be slightly underrated because because as we know, Steph fans, they love to downplay every single good thing that his teammates do. Celtic Warrior 85, Disturbed, one of my favorites bands. Doesn't get talked a lot when it comes to most successful artists in the past 20 years. Really? I think they get mentioned a lot. Love to hear your opinion about them. Well, 
I think the thing I admire most about Disturbed is that the first 20 seconds or so of every song that they've ever made sounds exactly the same before eventually drifting off into its own thing. I love Disturbed. I'm a big fan of theirs. They've obviously been around for a while, as you said. Uh, I listen to all their albums. They have great workout music, so I think that they are underrated. They are great. They are legit. Joe DeGroote. Drew Holiday, key player in the 21 NBA Finals and has been crucially underrated for his defensive work on the court. Seems like a guy that should have more than two All-Star appearances. Honestly, Drew Holiday has it made in the NBA. He is well-known enough to where people know his name, but he's not good enough to where he gets any of the blame when he doesn't play well or when his team loses. I call it the Clay Thompson zone, and he is perfectly in the Clay Thompson zone, where the only time you ever hear Drew Holiday get talked about is when people compliment him, but when he doesn't play well, then you never hear anything about it. When he doesn't shoot well, you rarely hear anything about it. He never gets criticized for anything, so I can't say he's underrated. You know what? I'm going to make some people angry on this. I'm going to say he's overrated. Christian Crespo, Michael Jordan on the Wizards. His tenure there was huge success considering his age and output. Disagree. Average points in the 20s each season. Helped team nearly double wins. Played 82 games that last season. No one likes to mention MJ's Wizards years, but is far from a train wreck. Underrated and underappreciated. Let me start off with saying, saying it was a huge success is completely false. They missed the playoffs back-to-back years in the worst Eastern Conference probably ever. When MJ was there his first year coming back with the Wizards, at one point they were doing well, and then he got hurt. He actually bumped knees with a teammate, and it screwed up his knee, and he missed. He ended up missing 22 games that year, and they ended up finishing 37-45. and He comes back for a second year, which was his last year ever, and they have the same exact record, 37-45. and He played all 82 games, yes, although people forget he came off the bench for 15 of those games. I I don't think really his name wasn't Michael Jordan. This wouldn't even be a discussion because his entire time at the Wizards, he was a high volume, low efficiency shot jacker, and they never won anything. So I guess you could say it's impressive that for somebody at 39, 40 years old, yes, that he averaged over 20 points a game. I tend to think of it as, well, LeBron has kind of rewritten the whole standard there, but I don't want to make this an MJ versus LeBron thing, but let's just say that MJ, his wizard years, there's a reason why a lot of MJ fans try to forget him. Verdict, overrated. Howdy do! I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on Herschel Walker's pro career. He's mostly known for his college career and his recent political career, so nobody seems to talk about his time in the NFL, or the USFL for that matter. Well, he was an amazing player in the USFL, although that was kind of like a minor league. He goes to the NFL, and he started out his career there, and he was really, really good with the Cowboys early on, but he'll always be most remembered for being traded to the Vikings in a trade that basically jump-started Cowboys dynasty in the 90s. I would say, overall, he was a very good NFL player, but if he had started his career in the NFL as opposed to wasting his first couple seasons in the USFL, maybe he would be in the Hall of Fame. As it stands in the NFL, he's in the Hall of Very Good. Overall, I would say he's properly rated. Lolito Vice, Patrick Willis, one of the best linebackers in the league when he played, but never won any individual accolades besides Defensive Rookie of the Year. Love your content. Well, I mean, he did make Pro Bowls and he was named All Pros, and rightfully so, I might add. Um, Overall, I would say in terms of was he worth the hype? Yes, he was properly rated when he played as one of the best linebackers in the game. I feel like he should be in the Hall of Fame. He should have made it before Zach Thomas, in my opinion, and he didn't. So I think Patrick Willis is, he's underrated until he gets into the Hall of Fame. Sage 211, Oreos, they're pretty good and an ideal after-school snack. I feel like you either like them or you don't. I would like to hear your thoughts on the chocolate cookies. I think Oreos are great in moderation. I think obviously if you eat them all the time, then you're probably not going to be happy with yourself in the long run because they're not very good for you but that's basically what they are I mean, that's that's their their dessert their junk food but they're very good and like most junk foods they taste really good that's one of the conundrums of life is that all the foods that are really bad for you taste really good and most of the foods that are good for you usually don't taste that good overall i would say oreos if you're just looking to pig out late at night and you got the munchies or you're just hungry they're the perfect snack for that i'd say they're properly rated Outlaw edits. Anthony Richardson. He had a great combine and lots of people moved him up at quarterback.
quarterback rankings, but he's still raw. Well, yeah, that's putting it very, very lightly. I think that he honestly, I don't know. Is he good at football? Do we know that he's good at football? We know he's a phenomenal athlete. We know he's an amazing athlete. He tested unbelievable at the combine. He might be the most physically gifted quarterback ever, but does he suck at playing quarterback? And that's the thing. At Florida, he wasn't very good. He wasn't awful per se, but he was not very good. So really, he owes, he and Will Levis, they both owe their entire multi-million dollar contracts that they're about to sign when they get drafted. They owe it to Josh Allen really, because he's a guy who started this entire trend for these super physically gifted quarterbacks with mediocre college stats that get drafted on potential. And because Josh Allen hit and actually was like the one in a million guy that actually turned turned out to become a great quarterback, every single team is going to look for guys like Richardson and Levis to see if they can reach their full potential form. Overall, overrated. Kosher cheese, mayonnaise. Some people either love it or despise it. Being on any food at all, love to hear your thoughts. You look fabulous to usual by the way i'll stop it you you always spoil me but yeah mayonnaise i'm not a big fan of it i use it maybe a little bit when i have tuna just to spice up the tuna a little bit because it's so dry other than that not a fan overrated rick rack shy gilgis alexander while some see him as an amazing all-star top 10 to 15 ish others see him as a stat pattern on a bad team curious for your thoughts love the content as always barry thank you Kawhi. i think shy is legit i think you look at his numbers i think that you can't put up numbers like that unless you actually are a great player and he is putting up about over 30 points a game and his player efficiency rating is amazing his numbers are amazing and okay see remember is supposed to be a team that's still tanking the fact that they're borderline in the play-in i think is a testament to sga and his ability so i think he is legit i think that the clippers have made a big mistake because they traded him in the paul george trade and i think in the long run i think Gil alexander will end up having a better career than paul george verdict underrated patrick scroggins billy ellish one of the most popular female artist currently and one of my favorites curious what your thoughts are on her plus i'm a huge fan of the channel thanks for all you do well i appreciate that thank you uh i don't listen to her music i've listened to some of it and i thought it was terrible i can think of two big reasons why she's so popular but i won't get into it she's overrated but she is hot i will give her that luna kendrick lamar he's regarded as one of the greatest rappers of his generation and arguably of all time would love to hear your opinion on his music and legacy as a whole well i'm not really into debating legacies and stuff about rappers and rock bands and musicians i just listen to music that i think is good and i have a couple of kendrick songs on on my iphone that i listen to overall though kendrick was never my favorite rapper because to me he always sounded like he was on the verge of crying like somebody just told him his dog died or something i never completely understood the hype even though he does have some good songs i'm gonna say he's overrated luke lee wing Bill Walsh, as a 49ers fan, he's the GOAT to me, but not that easy top two head coach of all time. He made a third round quarterback. No one expected anything into a top two quarterback of all time. He also made one of the best offense systems ever. Love to hear your thoughts. Also, Barry, I'm so sorry. I had the pre-Mark Tall sex. I'm literally blanking and vomiting uncontrollable. Well, buddy, I think you might be drunk, but I appreciate the sentiment. I would say Bill Walsh is properly rated as one of the greatest coaches in NFL history the west coast offense revolutionized the game and was basically a cheat code for many many years and we still see it nowadays he is one of the forefathers of the nfl properly rated addison elephants they're one of my favorite animals known for their intelligence artistic talent and having a really cool trunk would love to hear your thoughts oh wow look at the elephants they're so big and they're so cute and they have the trunk that they swing around and oh they're so smart oh really they were so smart how come they can't speak yeah checkmate elephants overrated nah for real I'm just kidding. I love elephants too. They're amazing. They are properly rated as one of the best animals in the world. I'm just going to call you TK. Is that okay? Great. The Last of Us, both games and the series. I think it is one of the great pieces of art I've ever consumed. Would love to hear your thoughts. Well, you should not eat video games. They are not meant to be eating. Just want to let you know that. I just started the show. I think the show is great. I never really played the game. So the show for me is basically all I know. I think it's been amazing. Some of it was a little bit drawn out. I could have done without the episode with Ellie and her friend in the mall. But besides that, it's a great show and I'm actually avoiding the game because I don't want to have any spoilers and it's very, very, it's, it's also scary too because the way that the pandemic and the outbreak start seems very feasible. So it's, it, I think it's a great show. I think it's great. I give it a verdict of properly rated. 
Dom O'Brien, Brandon Marshall, one of the better receivers in the 2000s, 2010s. He was constantly stuck on teams with and to mid QB play, underrated in my opinion. I would say that Marshall was a very, very good receiver. I think he's also a mental nutcase, though. And this entire rebranding he's done as, oh, well, I had some issues early in my career and I've gotten my health right. And mentally, I'm all great now. Don't worry about it. I've never fully bought it. He still comes across as disingenuous. Yes. But on the field, yes, he was a very, very good receiver. He never made the playoffs, which is why he gets overlooked and his career gets forgotten about. But strictly on the field, I would say he is underrated. Cody Summit, the Mandalorian. It is extremely popular and is finally coming out with its third season. I think that most people like it, but I have also met people who think it is terrible. That's usually how it goes in life. I was wondering what your thoughts are. Love the vids. Well, I think the Mandalorian, I think it's a good show. I do think it can get kind of tedious at times, a little slow at times, but I enjoy it. I think it's a good action show. Grogu is interesting. I think that Pedro Pascal is also interesting as Mando. So I think it's a good show. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a historically great show or TV show, but it's good. I like it. I think it's properly rated. In Sushi, and I hope I said that right, Jack Nicholas, my favorite golfer and one of the two greatest golfers ever, 18 majors and 19 second places is just unreal, but I have heard people say he wasn't that good because he didn't outclass his opponents like Tiger. Well, to me, uh, unlike team sports, golf is an individual sport, so I think it's pretty straightforward. I think Jack Nicholas, because he won the most majors, like you said, and had 19 second place finishes, uh, how is he not the greatest golf forever because you can say well his competition wasn't great but again we're talking about individual sport here we're not talking about team sport so i feel like i don't know how he can't be anything but properly rated as the best golfer of all time at one point it looked like tiger was going to completely destroy his majors record but at this point it, it doesn't look like that's going to happen i think nicholas's majors record is going to stand for a long long time and he's properly rated colin Gurley, Joel Embiid can lead the 76ers to his top seed consistently while averaging around around 30 for the past few years but come playoff time he can never get the Sixers out of the second round he also has injury issues when it comes to playoff time and I feel like it holds the Sixers back also can be a bit of a crybaby would love to hear your thoughts I absolutely hate Joel Embiid's game flopper he's brutal to watch and as you said his playoff career is extremely disappointing he's proven nothing in the playoffs he consistently declines in the playoffs every single year he has never played back-to-back -back playoff series in the same postseason without missing a game due to injury he is so fragile all the crap that anthony davis gets really should be going towards Joel b with that being said i would absolutely root for him and the sixers and harden if they were to get to the finals to play the warriors and i would root for them to shoot 100 free throws each every single game overall though overrated Guardian Ape, Diet Soda. I feel they get a bad rep from all the ob obese lards out there, but honestly, as someone who enjoys a good soda every now and then, I can't really tell the difference between regular and diet. I appreciate you putting it so eloquently. I honest, I'm not a fan of Diet Soda. I, I noticed the difference right away. Regular soda tastes so much better, but that's also why it's so much worse for you because there's so much more sugar and stuff in it. But Diet Soda isn't necessarily healthy either, and it tastes way worse. I've never had any sort of Diet Soda Soda tasted better than the regular soda. So to me, it's like if you're gonna just pig out and you're gonna just consume a bunch of calories, then just go with regular soda because both regular soda and diet soda aren't good for you. The soda might be a little bit worse for you, the regular soda that is, but it's gonna taste a lot better. So just enjoy it. Overall, diet soda overrated. Dylan Chapman, Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion, he has lived up to the hype after being traded to the Cavaliers. Well, yes, he's certainly played up to the hype after the trade. And the Cavaliers, this is the first time the Cavaliers have been good in my lifetime without LeBron. The last time they were a good team without LeBron, objectively, was like the late 90s. I still don't think they're going to really do much in the playoffs, but I mean, they're a fun team to watch. They got some nice young pieces. It's actually refreshing to see Cleveland do well on its own without LeBron there to hold their hand. So overall, I'd say Donovan Mitchell, he is properly rated as one of the star players in the league. Nathan, Tropic Thunder, totally over the top and out of pocket pocket comedy film. The film has received backlash for jokes that totally wouldn't pass, and it remains somewhat unpopular among younger audiences, despite having such a star-studded cast. I thought it was hilarious. I think it's great. I think it holds up well. I love it. I love Tom Cruise's character. Anybody who doesn't like Tropic Thunder, get over yourself and learn to laugh a little. Verdict? Underrated. Alex DeLarge, The Rolling Stones, the rock star prototype, with an unprecedented amount of hit songs and unprecedented longevity. Start me up, Barry. Oh, that sounds very naughty. 
see. Anyway, the Rolling Stones, I like some of their stuff. Not a big fan. They're a little bit before my time, but I do think that Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, their bodies need to be studied because there is no way they should still be alive right now with all the drugs and alcohol they've consumed. If we can somehow use their cells and maybe inject it into our soldiers and send them overseas, our soldiers would never die because they would just regenerate because Keith Richards and Mick Jagger, they are superhuman. Verdict, underrated. Pork Chop 550. Creamy peanut butter. Always liked it more than crunchy, but wanted your point of view. Thanks, Barry. I honestly, I, I've never had crunchy peanut butter, and if you like crunchy peanut butter, then you probably have some issues that are a lot bigger than you probably think. Verdict, properly rated. Ryan Moore, Pedro Pascal. He's been in so much recently as basically the big media darling of the moment. I've enjoyed every character I've seen him in, from Game of Thrones to Kingsman to The Mandalorian, but I'm curious of your thoughts on him as an actor, as a viable boyfriend for your wife. Thank you for the incredible content, Barry. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I like Pedro. I think Pedro is a great actor. He does well on basically everything he does. To me, he will always be Oberlin Martell, and no matter what he does, though, I just, I will never be able to get his death scene in Game of Thrones out of my head, even though he's gone on to do so many great things. It's just that scene where the mountain just, just squashes his head like a pumpkin. It's, it's probably the most shocking scene I've ever seen live, where I've watched, and so that's, that's all I can think about when I see him still, but he is very good. He is properly rated to me as one of the best actors in Hollywood currently. Corn on Jacob, 18. Jermaine O'Neal, he was a six-time All-Star on the Pacers and was one of the most dominant power forwards in the 2000s, but didn't do much outside of his time in Indy. Well, he got off to a slow start, rode the bench with those loaded Portland teams early on, and then he blossomed in Indy to be a star. I'm just going to say that I think that he was, for the most part, properly rated, but I will always remember him most for not connecting on a punch in the Malice of the Palace, and this is what this picture is. If he did not slip on that wet spot, he would have murdered that man with a punch. And if that had happened on national television, I don't know if the NBA would have recovered from that. So thank God for that wet spot that Jermaine O'Neal slipped on. Camden Barnes. Thoughts on Victor Wembenyama. As a Spurs fan, I would love to see how he can develop under Pop, even though I know even for a bottom seed, there's a slimmer chance to get a top pick as it was a few years ago. Again, I'm not a draft nerd. I don't spend hours of every day looking at prospects. So I basically have only seen a couple clips. My Just my initial gut instinct is I'm not as bullish on him as everybody else seems to be just because he's so skinny and you, I look at his shooting percentages he's not a great three-point shooter he's really really skinny I uh, I just don't know I just think I think to me I, I'm like what's the difference between this guy and Chris Tapp Porzinga? I just don't uh, I don't know that's just my instinct on it I think he's overrated Bro Taco, Rocky IV. First three movies have a special place in my heart, but the fourth movie is where I felt they jumped the shark. Side note, thank you for your service in the fight against marijuana. Well, I'm just gonna tell you, bro, Rocky IV ended communism forever, okay? So, better watch what you say about Rocky IV. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. I love it. I love Ivan Drago. I love how Rocky is this five foot ten Italian guy, and he's able to beat the crap out of a six foot five Russian on steroids. It's just amazing. I think Rocky IV is underrated and a cinematic masterpiece. Golfing Gamer. Roller coasters. I'm a huge fan of them to the point where I keep track of everyone I've ridden and ranked them, but others seem to think I'm crazy. <sighs> Why would they think that? What's your take on them and do you have a favorite? Honestly, when it comes to roller coasters, I go back and forth. I'm really up and down on them at different points. Uh, no, but really, I think they're great. I think they're exciting. Whenever I have gone to theme parks, which is not often, I've always ridden them and I've been enticed by them and I love them. They're great. They're properly rated. Purple Creature, a 3600 Slipknot, my favorite metal band of all time, and the reason I started playing drums. Yeah, Slipknot, is, you know, they're pretty good. I think they've gotten a little bit soft maybe later. I think their earlier stuff is better. But really, honestly, let's Corey Taylor's neck. I mean, just look at this. Just look at this guy's neck. He's the lead singer, for those who don't know. He's the lead singer of Slipknot. His neck is just, it, it's the eighth wonder of the world. Honestly, Slipknot, properly rated. Corey Taylor's neck, massively underrated. Mason Minor, Joe Flacco. I thought he was pretty solid in his early years and near X during his 2012 playoff run. His quality did drop his last few years with the Ravens, but he has had some good moments here and there, such as the Jets game against the Browns in Week 
too. What's your opinion of Flacco? I think now Flacco has been basically a meme for the last decade or so, ever since his aforementioned playoff run where he won the Super Bowl. But before that, he actually was, you look at the stats, he was a consistently average to slightly above average quarterback. And then he had that fluke playoff run. And after that, he's just been largely terrible outside 2014. 2014's the last year where he had a objectively good season. So if you would ask me this question heading into 2013 after he was fresh off of that playoff run, I probably would say he's overrated. But by now, everybody knows he's a joke and that he stinks, so I'd say he's properly rated. Zuja A. Pau Gasol recently got his Lakers jersey retired and wondering what you thought about him and his time at the Lakers and if he deserved it. Well, he was one of the best power forwards in the league when he was with the Lakers, and the fact that they were able to swindle him in 2008 for Kwame Brown remains one of the most puzzling and biggest lopsided trades in sports history. And in terms of did he deserve to have his number retired, he's certainly on the lower end of the players to have ever gotten their numbers retired in terms of greatness with the Lakers, but he was a massive part of two championship teams and you could easily argue that he was the best player in the 2010 finals for the Lakers and he should have won finals MVP. So I would say yes he deserves it but if Pau Gasol deserves it then LeBron James definitely deserves to have his number retired. That's all I'm going to say. Overall I would say he was underrated. Eric Dickerson not the running back. Ted Lasso I've never been a fan of soccer at all but for some reason the show got to me. He found it during quarantine. He gave it a quick try then found myself with a tear rolling down my eye by the end of season one. Now the wife and I can't wait for every new season and wonder if you have been swayed by the pop culture quirkiness yet. Do you believe? I I've never seen the show, so I can't say whether it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated. So, to be determined. John Boric. Kiss, I'm a big fan. Their stage show and pyrotechnics were industry leading for a while, and in my opinion, their music is pretty solid too. However, many critiques I hear are that the makeup costumes are a cheesy gimmick, their musicianship is lacking, and they've toured for too long. Would love to hear your thoughts. I think, yeah, they got a couple they got a couple catchy songs, I guess. Old fashioned. Again, mostly before my time. I think the makeup and stuff, it's iconic, it's something you recognize them for. I'd say they're basically properly rated as one of the most memorable bands of all time. Manny Hill. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, if you've ever had it. Literally the greatest cereal of all time. I've had it a couple times in my life, and yes, it was very good. I don't really keep a list of the best cereals ever off the top of my head, so I'll just say it's it's definitely up there as one of the best cereals ever. So it's properly rated. Lucas Gus, Namdi Asimwa. Never gets any mention in conversations of best corners, but he had some insane standout seasons as a Raider. He didn't get a lot of picks because QB is hardly through to him. I think his peak was short, and he disappeared shortly after. Well, yeah, he disappeared disappeared the moment he put on an Eagles uniform, one of the worst free agent signings in NFL history. He was a freaking bum. Yeah, I mean, he was great with the Raiders when they were irrelevant and never on national television, but once the bright lights hit, he shriveled up and he stunk. So, Nandri Ashwa overrated. Shawshank Iyer, Otto Graham, led the Browns to 11 straight championship games, 10 actually, and won seven of them, along with being a three-time MVP. However, the standard of play was nowhere near what it is now. Do you believe he should be rated as the Bill Russell of the NFL? Love the videos, Barry. Looking forward to some new merch as well. Thank you. I think that Otto Graham was both great and overrated. He basically is like the Brady of his era. He won a lot. He had great numbers for his era, and his playoff stats were also a lot worse than his regular season numbers. Basically, four of his championships came in like a minor league, the AAFC, and then they migrated to the NFL in 1950. So he really only went three and three in NFL championship games, but whatever. I mean, he's before my time. He looks disturbingly similar to Adam Carolla. I'm going to say he is overrated. Aiden Beamish, Will Ferrell, very similar to Sandler in the fact that he's been in many classics while also some duds. Also, Barry, your handsomeness is life-saving. Yes, I know. Thank you. I think Will Ferrell's great. I've always enjoyed his type of humor. I know that some people find him obnoxious and over the top, but I always think he's great. I think he's funny. It's not to say he hasn't had some misses every now and then, but I think overall a lot more hits than misses. So I think he's properly rated as a comedic superstar. Dragon Tamer. The Exorcist is my favorite horror movie of all time and it's the one movie that i feel like has genuinely scared me <laughs> what a wimp you are no but really i think the exorcist is a great film i think it's an entertaining film i didn't necessarily find it scary per
per se, because I know it's not realistic, but still, great film, properly rated as a classic. Andrew, Julius Randle, at times he makes mistakes that most superstar players would not. Well, that's because he's not a superstar. And his efficiency may not be the highest echelon, but his overall production this year is greatly responsible for the next turnaround into a high seed in the East. Look, Julius Randle's a good player. He is a borderline all-star. He's, you know, he's an all-star caliber player. I wouldn't say he's a star player. He plays in New York, so he gets a lot of extra attention. He, he's never shown anything in the postseason. He made the postseason once, and he was absolutely horrible. So until he goes on some deep playoff run, then he'll never really be taken serious. I'd say he's properly rated where he is. Trevor Rich, Harrison Ford, one of the best actors of all time. Well, you basically said it. Harrison Ford, properly rated. Our Griff Giants, Marcus Mariota's college career, won the Heisman and led Oregon to their last real competitive season, but never got it together in the pros. Well, in college, obviously his college career was nothing but sensational. That's why he won the Heisman. He's one of the best college quarterbacks ever. Although he never won a national championship, so because of that, I'm going to have to say he's slightly overrated, and also because he was a bust in the NFL. And finally, Flamesaurus, the 2006 Rose Bowl. I'm certainly biased as a Texas fan, but I still consider it to be the single greatest football game I've ever seen. Well, it's certainly up there as one of the best football games of all time. It had everything. It had star power. It had Heisman Trophy winners. It had a dramatic ending, obviously, with Vince Young. So yeah, it's easily one of the best college football games ever, and it's properly rated as one of the best college football games of all time. <laughs>